So this video tutorial on Kodu Game Lab will show you how to create a simple pawn game. So I'll show you what you'll be ending up producing. So you've got uh, two players, you can control the sources. And the aim of the game is to hit the park and try to make sure it doesn't hit your coloured area behind you. You'll see if it does hit your coloured area, uh, your point score will increase on the right hand side. And obviously the aim of the game is first person to get to a set number and will score. So I'll show you how to make that. So the first step is to create a new Kodo game. So you go to the home menu and click on New World. Okay, so the first thing you need to do for your pawn game is to add the plane surface. So if you select the ground brush tool and then the four coloured boxes you can choose the colour you want for your main plane surface. I'm going to choose number 25 and that's just a sort of black one. And if you click on the right arrow button on your keyboard, you can make it bigger and then uh, choose the right size that you want. So you can make it any size you want, so if you wanted a bigger plane surface you can. Okay, so the next step is if you make your brush size smaller to make your coloured areas on the edge of your map and choose two different colours I'm going to choose a red and a blue area try and find a good colour to use I'll use that one for my blue, number 96 and if you select in this icon here you can choose the shape of your brush. I'm going to choose this one, which is a linear one, and that will stretch your land from one side to the next, and that will be nice and straight. So that's my blue section. And if I do the same again for red, so I'll scroll through to find a decent red colour. So I'll use that one there. Around right in the corner and drag that to the other side. Okay, so now I've got two plane surfaces. It might be useful if you maneuver around to go right above it just to see how that's worked. Scroll out a bit. As you can see, mine's not exactly straight. So I can do that again to make sure my red. that side all the way along just to ensure it's a bit more straight there. Okay, so that's the first main step. So the next step is to add your paddle and ball in your pong game. So if you go to the object tool at the bottom and click where you want one. So for the paddle I'm going to use a saucer you can use what you like, but I think this is quite a good one because it moves quite fast uh, and it's quite nimble as it says there. Okay, so we'll use that one. And as you can see it's in there and we want to so if you right click on it, change its height and make sure it's on this floor, so it's on the surface. Okay. So you only need one of the paddles for now. So what we'll do is when we add the code we'll copy and paste it so it saves us adding the code again. Uh, and the other object we need is a ball and I think the best one to use is a puck but obviously you can adapt yours and use a different object so we'll put the puck in and once again we'll make sure uh, the height is all the way on the floor so it's the same level as your saucer okay. so next we'll add some code for your saucer so you can move it using the controls on the keyboard. Uh, if you make sure you're on the object tool at the bottom and hover over yours, right click and click on program and we want it to so when you press the keyboard and arrows we want it to move but we also want it to only move up and down so you can't go everywhere on the surface. So what you can do is limit it to this one here, the little train tracks underneath. 
and north to south, so that means it will run from the top to the bottom of your game. And then the second one, so in the second row, we want it to, when it bumps, and when it bumps, so we're looking for the puck, so we'll see if that's in bot one. Right, so puck there, so when it bumps the puck, you want it to, and actions, and then launch it. So that says the keyboard arrows uh, allow you to move but only north and south. And when you bump into the puck, you will launch the puck. Okay. So let's see what that does. Okay, so at the minute, we can move up and down. And the next step is to add some movement to the puck. Okay, so now we know our paddle works, we can copy that. So we right click and copy and we'll paste another one over here. And we need to change the settings on this one. We program and if you change it from arrows to the WASD keys, so now you can have two players controlled by two different people. Okay. And just to add some effects to our game, we could maybe change this one to blue Oops. and we'll change this one to red so we've got two different teams okay. you can see they're two slightly different colours now so the next step is to add the air code onto the puck to allow that to move so if you hover over it and go to program so when we want it to go away so we can leave that blank so we'll always do it and move make sure you do forward so that means your puck will always be moving in a forward direction and to add the score system on number two if you click on when and in the more column here we've got on land and this will allow us to put some program in there which says when it touches the blue land it will add one to the score the red team. So when on land and then types and at the bottom the types of land that you've used will come up first and we need blue. Uh, so now it says when on land of the blue type. Let's leave that on there and then it, you want it to add to your score. So that's in game and add one to your score and you can do that to the red team. So you've got a red score at the top. So that says if you hit the blue, red team score will increase. And if your puck is inside that area, it might add for about five seconds, it'll add five, six, seven, eight points to your total. We only wanted it to do it once. So that says when on land, type blue, it will add one score to the red score, which will appear in the top right hand corner. So we can do the same again for the other side. So when on land, type, and this time it'll be red. So when your hits the red team's side, you want it to add one to the score, and the colour will be blue, and you want that to do that once. Okay. So the main code there is you need to move forward, and then you need to say if on a particular type of land, it'll add that score to that side. So we can test to see if that works. So if you press the play button, you can see our puck's moving now. And when it hits the red side, it adds one to the blue. And it hits that side, it adds it to the blue team. Brilliant. So you would have seen when we press the play button then that the camera view sort of zoomed in when we play. So make sure that doesn't happen. Go on settings on the bottom right and click on camera mode and you want it fixed. And then it says set camera X or press X, and you want to set it so it's just in the middle of your page. And I might zoom in a bit and press in there. So that will always stay there and play the game. So we'll try that out. So you can see now it just stays in one location, just hovering above where your game is. Okay. Next step, what we can do to make the game look slightly better is to add a wall around it. So if you choose the path tool, right click in the corner, add a wall, 
And if we go around, you want typing. So this is just to hide the sort of unsightly bits around the corners and on the edge when it's uneven. So we go around quickly doing that. You see when it joins up, it goes yellow. If you press there, you can change the colour. So if you go through your arrow um, button on the keyboard, you can change your wall to whatever colour you like. Choose that green one there, and you can also change the path style. So you've got different paths by clicking down and up. And I think the one we had first was the best, so we'll use that one. And then if you just press escape, that comes off, and you've got your wall going on the outside. Okay, now, so if we press play, you'll see our game works, and it adds a score. So uh, just to improve your game, the things you can do, you can change the size of your objects so if you want to change it to bigger or smaller you could also change the speed so on change settings you can change various things on the speed to make the game easier or harder uh, you could also if you go down to the settings menu again change lots of things so you could change the skyline to make it a different effect in the background so you could choose a darker one or a green one and you can also change the lighting to make it darker or lighter. Um, so we'll have a space one to add to our effect. Okay, so you can see it's changed now. Um, so that's harder to see our colours, so we'll try something different. So lighting. So that's moved. Yeah, it's a bit better. And press play, you can see the effects have changed. Um, other things you could probably add to improve it further is adding a limit when you score. So you can add a program in there, so, so when the score is 5 points, you can have a game win, um, and to set the colour you can do that for red and also do that for blue, uh, so when points blue you win the game so win so quickly test it out so hopefully when the red team gets four points five points rather it'll win the game there you go so the winner sets to that but obviously you can change yours to any points you like uh, to make your game different and also you can change the start of the game so at the minute we start with nothing we could add a description or title I'm going to go for a countdown for mine and when we press play now it starts with a countdown at the beginning okay. so have a go at creating your own one game you could obviously change it to make it a lot different you can change the environment, you can change the characters just to make it your own. Okay, thanks for watching.